welcome to lesson six of Haskell for Dummies. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at tuples and we're going to querying and reading type signatures. OK, so let's step into tuples. So what are tuples? Uh, tuples is a type and it holds multiple values within a single value. OK, so if you can see here, so it's an X and a Y. So if you see more than three, generally, as a rule, you want to be looking at list rather than keeping all these values inside the tuple. So if we look at the data type and, and its constructors, you can see here, so you've got a data, parens, comma, parens, a, b, and that equals the same thing. So we'll explain this a little bit further. Let's have a little play around. OK, so if we go like this. Three. There you go. So we're returning a tuple. So what's happening is we're passing that value. That expects two variables to come in, which we're giving it, and that returns us a tuple of one and three. Each tuple can be anything, but because it's restricted to an A and a B, they have to be a specific types. OK? So we can mix them up. So in here we could have like, you know, a true and Vince. OK. But because you've declared it to be a tuple of the length of two, if you give it just one value, then it will give you an error saying that the function doesn't have um, enough arguments. OK. Sometimes if you look at these errors, they might be a little bit confusing. So what happens is you look here and you go, oh, why is it going on about show and print? OK, well, normally you you'd know that it's unable to print it properly. And then if you look a little bit further down, maybe you haven't applied a function to enough arguments. Though compiler errors can be a little bit confusing, sometimes if you just, you know, you learn to sort of spot where they are and what's happening. Uh, in this case, it's just saying essentially it's not got enough arguments. You've just given it one. So I can't print it. The only way that I can print something, I expect to have it two arguments, not just one. OK, so now let's have a little play with first and second or F st and synod. <laughs> OK, what we can do actually is we can create these. Uh, and this is interesting. So A, B. And we're returning an A. What you can do with tuples, which is really good, is you can pattern match very much the same way as what the type declaration looks like. So a tuple, you're expecting to have a value of A and B. OK, and then we're saying, if you look at the type, that we return an A. So let's just do that. A. OK, here is giving us like a hint saying, well, you're not actually using B. You could just do underscore. OK, and then if you want to do second, very much the same. Except this time we return B. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing, except we do underscore on the first value, and that would equal B. Right, let's test these little guys out. We'll reload and we'll do first one, two. Ah, okay, it's a little bit confused because I've these already exist in the core, you see, in the prelude, and I've just renamed them exactly the same. So to get past that, we'll just make call them tick at the end. OK, there we go. So I'll reload again. And we'll do that will work, but it's not using R1. But if I do with a tick, same result. OK, it returns one. And then if we do two and three, then it will return three. And that's how they work. Aha, uh -huh. OK, so this is quite interesting. We'll do this in a prelude. So can I be like this? OK, so we'll get some, we'll call something called my tube. We're given a first value. We're assigning it a type of integer. And then a second value is just a string. OK. And then what we can do is find out the type of. Oh, wrong way around. There we go. So it's saying my tube has a type of integer as a first value. And the second value is a list of characters, which we know that converts 
to a string. Okay, so I've shown how we call first and then second. What we can actually do is if we import data dot tuple like this, and we can swap my tuple. There you go. So the original of my tuple was one and blah, and then we've used a function that does swap, and that does blah and one. So if we have a little look at the type of swap, you'll see it's a tuple of A to B it takes in, and then it returns us a tuple of B to A. So namely apt swap. This other example is saying that we can combine the tuples. So if we have uh, 2 plus the first of 1 and 2, that return is 3. So what it's saying is grabbing 2 plus, and what's the first of the tuple is 1. So 2 plus 1 equals 3. So as I mentioned before, you can use syntax to pattern match, which is exactly what we did here and then second, okay, which is really handy because then it looks very much like the type definition, but you've got it as a pattern match. Okay, let's have a little look at this function. We'll grab it and I'll explain what's happening here. Okay, what I like to do with these guys, whoop, let's do some of this. So we're passing it a tuple of int and a list of A, another int and a list of A, and then we want to return an int and a list of A. Okay, all these A's are of the same type. So look what exactly this means. So we can pattern match on these. So this is the first one, that's A, and then this is B, and that's C, and then this is D. Okay, C and D. And then that returns us, so we want to return an int of A. Okay, so we know that A and C are definitely going to be ints. So it's this one and this one. So we're going to add them together. And then B and D, we're adding together now two lists. So the addition of two lists is plus plus, And the addition of just a number is A plus C. Okay. And then we can see this in action. So if we reload, uh, so we'll do uh, tuple func. We're going to pass it two tuples. First one will be like two, and the second value will give it a. We'll give it a list of a and b, and then here we'll do a two again. And we'll give it a list of C and D. And I've got to close off the list. Let's see what happens. I've done an error. Let's have a look what I've got wrong. Oh, there it is. I can see it. Boom. There we go. So the addition would be what we've done here says A plus C which gives us 4, so that's 2 plus 2, that's 4, and then it's going to accumulate the two lists, so it'll be A, B, C, D, and we passed it before they were A and B, and then C and D, okay? And lastly, it just explains, you know, it's unwise to have anything that's sort of bigger. Here it's saying most of it will be five tuples or smaller. I generally go for three, I mean, yeah, but... If, if it's more than that, then it, it becomes a little bit more difficult once you're trying to access, you know, number one, two, three or five. It, it, you know, it becomes a little bit silly. Right. Let's have a little look at list. I mean, I've mentioned lists throughout and we literally just used two lists when we did uh, A, B and then C, D. So unlike a tuple, which can have multiple types for each value. So, you know, you've got a type A and type B here. In a list, every value of that list has to be of the same type. So we can't do my list and we can't have it equal to, you know, uh, 1, B. 
Yes, it's erroring because it's saying, well, I don't have anything with a string and num. Okay, when it's when it's used in, so it's saying, well, this should potentially be a string. But I've got a number here as well, so oh, and it gets confusing. It's essentially saying, well, I can't mix and match types inside a list. So we can do this again, and this time we'll have a list of integers. Let's have a little look at that type. My list. Well, it's actually put in a constraint of num. So it's anything under the num class is what GHC is saying. So any of these A's that are under the num, because we've just put one, two, three, the GHC is going to say, well, technically one, two, three can be anything under the num class. So that's why it's putting that constraint here of num A. And then it's a list of A. And then what we can do is to play around, we can do P equals 10. And then whoop, my list two can equal one, two, three, and then P. And if we look at my list two, there's my list one, whoops, and my list two, one, two, three, and then P because it's of the right type turns to 10 here. Okay, and then if we have a look at the type of my list two, you see it's constrained to a num of A and it's a list of A. In this example, it's doing the same but with strings. So we can copy it just for clarity. So there's P and then we're grabbing an awesome and then we make an awesome which is equal to P as a first value, a string of curry and a string of smiley face. Okay, so then if we do the type of the type of awesome, then awesome is a list of a list of chars, which is a list of string. Okay. Yeah, so it says that right here. So a list of chars valued because it's a list of strings and a string is a type Elias for a list of char. Okay. I can just show you this here actually if we search for it. There we go. Type string equals list of chars. Okay, so that's what if you see that generally like this, um, you just end up knowing that a list of chars is a string. Okay, so we can accumulate these together, much like we did with numbers. So let's have an S, the Simons, and then we'll have an also, which is which is a list of string quake, and then the string Simons. Okay, so we've got that. And then we'll check out the type of plus plus. So plus plus takes a list of A, another list of A, and returns us a list of A. So if we had awesome above, which is here, okay, so we're gonna add awesome and also. So awesome plus plus also. And what do you reckon that's gonna return? Let's do it. Okay, so it'll be Papichon, Curry, Smiley Face, Quake, the Simons. So it's Papi Chon's a P, Curry, and then a smiley face, and then Quake, which comes out of also, and then last is the Simons for the yes. Okay? And then the next bit, all awesome, equals a list of awesome and also. Okay, what do you think the type of all awesome would be? Well, it's a list of a list of string or a list of chars. So how is this turning out? Let's have a little look. If we just call it like this, you'll see. So we've got, there's the first list and then embedded inside that list, we've got a second list and then it's still in the same list, we've got another list. Okay, so this is embedded lists. But again, this works because these are all of the same type. But if we were to say all awesome 
plus plus let's say the number let's say the number three is not going to have it but if we were to say all awesome and add a b then it would be fine you see how it's added it so there's our list of lists there's our first list second list and then the sec and then the third one that we just added here what i've made sure to remember here is the depth of these lists because we've got a list of lists i've then added this inside of the external list aha uh -huh. so the next one is talking about concat with which is a concatenation so if you look we've got a list of list of a and then we're just returning a list of a so this is pretty cool. So if we look at our list of list of A, which is this, let's do concat all awesome. Okay. Boom. And now it's concatenated it. So if we actually do, let's have a look at that. Concat. Whoops, I've done it wrong. What is a type of all awesome? So it's a char. It's a list of a list of chars, so we can say a list of string. And what was it before? So you can see how we've essentially grabbed what used to be two lists within a list and then just returned a single list of all the values. So if you look here, we've just returned a single list. So we've concatenated two lists together. So we've gone from, well, it's actually that and then so for us it would have been like this let's have a look i mean this is this is just pseudo types okay so we've done that so you can see it's a a list of here and inside of that is a list of chars which is let's make it a little bit simpler a string there we go because otherwise it might be a little bit we just need one more okay so we've converted that and then what we then return because you can see it's two of those we just return this okay so we're concatenating these two together to just returning us a list of string so this is demonstrated here where we've got two lists there's list number one comma list number two but then if we do it this way where we use concat We've just got one list, and inside of there, each value is a string. Okay, so that's what concat does. Okay, I think that'll do for lesson six. So in lesson six, what we looked at was tuples. A little bit further up here. Yes, yeah, so we had a little look at tuples. I've gone a little bit too far. Here they are. So tuples, and how they can carry either one type or another inside a single type and then we saw how we can mix those types like this and then further down we were able to grab the first or the second value inside the tuple here's that demonstration that we can have different types here and then after that we made our own first and second and we made a function that was able to add those different types together so because this was a list we used a plus plus and because it is a single int, we use a single plus here. Then after that, we looked into list and how we were able to manipulate lists and what lists were and how they had to be of a single type. Lists can't be of mixed types. They just have to be a single type. And obviously you see that a string, which is a list of char. And then we use plus plus to add two lists together. So we added awesome and also together to return us a single list with all the, the values as one long list. And then we made another list of lists. And what we did with that, we played around with concat. Okay, so that's there. And look forward to seeing you on lesson seven. Cheers. Bye.